Oh man, I miss the Bergheim, and I guess I saw this video pop up on my on my um, IG feed. Um, somebody uploaded a, a Q video that they took from the Bergheim that basically encapsulates the magic of this place, and it got me thinking about the beauty of going to spaces that don't permit you to take pictures or spaces where you actively don't try to take videos or pictures yourself because there's a few here in the uk like mix and the yard is similar when i go to mix or the yard i like to kind of immerse myself in the atmosphere and i don't really take out my phone too much when i go out to a smoking area i force myself to kind of speak speak to people you know have a bit of conversation maybe chit chat about who's playing what they're wearing whatever and just try and be a part of the scene in general right and i always feel like those events are usually the best um or the funnest times i've had so it's whenever i see these images of like you know a michael baby and all these kind of tech house you know twirling their fingers around the air people playing and the little hand stuff it always makes me wonder what kind of fun the people are having because most of the time whenever you're watching these video clips you always see people just flashing their phones the phone flashes on continuously right they're recording the whole entire set i don't know where they put these videos because you know by and large most of the videos are going to be pretty crap right to basically re-watch but they like just filming the whole thing the entire time they're there right not really experiencing the event but i think part of the beauty of a place like Bergen is strict with the door policy, strict with the no taking pictures indoors, and just in general, right? Is that you have to, you're kind of forced to do this weird thing that you did back in the day where, you know, for, for sure, and most people would agree that you remember more vividly the times when you were a teenager or maybe prior to you getting a smartphone because you didn't have any way of capturing those moments, right? Apart from using your mind, you didn't have a way to like record them or upload them onto a social media platform. You just had to kind of remember the best times you had with your friends, falling over, uh, buying something, your first kiss, da -da -da, a goal you scored, whatever, right? You remember those moments really vividly and i think bergheim does that in a really strange way because as soon as you go as basically w w going leading up to it you're already ramping yourself up in it right because you're w hoping you get in you queue in an orderly fashion you don't talk to nobody you're super quiet uh you're trying not to look too drunk you're trying not to look too high and by the time you get to the door you're just hoping that you get the nod right to go in next or 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 you're hoping that they ask you a question like it's just usually a good sign that you have an ability to get a 50 50 right do you know who's playing um blah 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 where you from how many are you how many are you with right you usually those questions are usually a good indication that you're 50 50 chance of getting in if you get the straight hey not tonight it's over and of course you turn around um tuck your tail between your legs and go somewhere else right but you're already kind of psyching yourself up in a way where you're kind of okay cool i'm being well behaved as possible so that when i go in there i'm going to have a time in my life and you're and you're telling yourself as well you're giving yourself a little prayer of like god if you let me get in there i swear i'm going to take advantage of every little moment i'm going to have the time of my life i'm not going to leave until the lights come on right that's what you're basically doing to yourself and then once you do get in there guess what happens you absolutely let loose and you have one of the best times you've ever had because you were looking forward to it so much that you were willing to not even try and play around with the no pictures on the dance floor thing. Now, again, you could try, but it's not the game. Um, they don't even give you an option, right? They're, they're ferocious about putting the pictures on the front and the back of your camera on your smartphone. They don't play games at all with that. And if anything, if ever you do see pictures of people indoors, you only see the pictures of people in toilets and stuff, you know, high with all their friends taking pictures and doing photo shoots. But for the most part, um, I think it's best you just go there blind, not knowing what's in the inside and just, you know, and it kind of uh, really brings, it kind of uh, allows you to really capture the moment when you do finally do get in there. So when I see this video, it's this um, post took on YouTube, or sorry, on Instagram of the queue. I don't know if this is Saturday or Sunday night. It kind of brought those memories back to me because it reminds me, you know, how it feels to be um, up against these barricades towards the front when you know you're about to get in. <coughs> how it feels like walking from the back of the street right and seeing the queue and then seeing from far see how far the queue's going um how it feels getting a curry works at the spot just above the, well just near where the taxi ranks are before you get into the place and it just made me miss clubbing so much man and it's a video of it. it just made me miss clubbing i really want to go out look how long that queue is but fyi i don't think i've ever been if i don't think i've ever been to bergheim with a queue that's been that long most of the time i've been there the queue has been probably about to a taxi rank it's never been further than that uh but the good thing about these queues is that um much like the queue you get at a cash point 
if you just wait, you're, you're definitely going to get your turn. Um, they're, they're, they're really good at making sure people, you know, are recycling in and out. And because it's open, you know, all weekend, essentially mon- Friday to sun- Monday, it probably allows, it probably gives you a better chance to get in. Because honestly, if, if this was like a normal club that closed on like Sunday mo- Saturday morning, open at Friday night, close at Saturday morning, and it opened again at Saturday, no one would get in. You'd be, you'd, you know what I mean? It would be a capacity for the moment it opened the stores. But because it's open all weekend long, and you have the ability to re-enter now for like five euros or 15 euros, how much it is, it gives everybody a chance to get in because people are always coming in and out, going to get food, going back to sleep, hooking up with some other friends, going to change, shower, whatever it may be, man. I, I absolutely love it. They're actually, the last time I went, I actually took a change of clothes with me. That was fucking awesome. I love that. Look at that. Look at that. And it's incredible too how orderly the queue is. You know, in the UK, usually if this happened and there was a long queue that was going this far back, there'd be like scores of annoying bouncers shouting at everyone. Well, not they, they're not annoying. They only do their job because you know English UK people can't be trusted to form an orderly queue and just be quiet and kind of you know uh, not be a nuisance to the community. So um, they'd have to be shouting at you, everyone, get in line, stop making noise, pull your drinks. Da, da, da. There'd be constant shouting. There'd be people screaming. But look how quiet and orderly. Well, again, the videos are sped up, but everyone's very orderly, very quiet, no colours, everyone's wearing black for the most part. But look how far back it goes, like, wow. That's insane. I really miss it, man. I really miss it. Wow. So that's why when I see these videos of these um business techno people playing in places like don't get me wrong they're all successful and doing their own thing their own right but there's none of these guys i'd want to see that badly enough to go and subject myself to hanging around with people that have got their phones in the air 24 hours of the day they're probably just there for the look and not so no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, it's not fair to say they're there for the look who knows they might be there for the music but regardless it's not my scene it's not my crowd it's not what i kind of look for when i go out on the nights out this is what i kind of look for because already i'm kind of you know replaying all the best nights i've had in there and again this is just representative of just the other places i'd go to it's not just only Bergham. there's other places i go to here in london too that i've got the same sort of feeling but uh this is what i miss most about uh normal life i guess um the lack of nightclubs uh the lack of spots where i can actually see good djs play um be around people that love the music as much as i do and just have a bit of a good time and let your hair down in it because at the moment like i said um i think i mentioned prior there's loads of i'm getting so many emails from different promoters um that are basically uh putting on events um you know in secret um, where you have to kind of collect the ticket at a certain place, you have to go to a certain door, you have to, you know, say a different password, you've got to bring a number to get the address. Like everyone's doing, people are people are raving out there. If you do, if you weren't aware, especially in the UK, people are at, people are going out. Um, and I was kind of, oh, I kind of feel like I should do it, but you know, number one, I wouldn't be at ease going out. I wouldn't feel, um, I wouldn't feel comfortable in the space, and I just don't think it's the right thing to do now at the moment i just don't think so i think there's a more important things that people need to do day in day out with their lives and you know getting their situation in order in terms of you know what they're gonna do when everything's over and how they kind of want to be once everything is kind of opens up again but to go to a rave now it just doesn't feel like the right time in my opinion again um that's just what i feel about and then i guess i saw and other this other video that kind of made me miss dancing on a dance floor. This incredible video of this girl. I'm pretty sure it might be pretty old, but it's a, it's a girl um, that's dancing at the end of a gig somewhere. I'm not sure where she is, but it's pretty amazing and pretty smart. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Man. That's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun, isn't it? Man, I miss going out so much, man. That's what it's all about, isn't it? That's really what it's all about, man. Just being in your own head, uh, dancing away the night. Uh, and just having the time of your life in it, just letting loose, letting being free. And again, I just don't know if I could do the same sort of thing with a face mask on, knowing full well that you know I could potentially be putting loads of people's lives at risk by, um, you know, um, scratching my own itch. I don't think it's worth it now. I just don't think so. 
I'd much rather do it when everyone else is doing it, really, when it's safe to do it, and I don't feel as if I'm going to cause the death of somebody's grandma. I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit of a P word in that regard, but hey, what can you do? Uh, next on the list, what else do we have here? <coughs> there was some, what, protests in Berlin? I'm not sure what they're protesting about. Maybe they want to protest about the reopening of the nightclubs and stuff, I'm assuming. What does it say here on the caption? It says here, big protest in Berlin. Club and Clubs and promoters and workers want the scene to be reopened. What are your thoughts on this? I don't know how accurate this is as a description. I'm not sure how constructive this is as well to be protesting. Um, I'm sure... <clears throat> I don't know, but it depends. I'm sure. I don't say I'm sure because I guess in some places there is a feeling that a lot of these politicians are quick to close down things, but then don't have a plan of how they're going to restart the economy in a safe and manageable way, and also in a way that prevents the loss of numerous amounts of jobs. In it, that's the issue at hand because I'm sure a lot of these places will be like, "Look, we're happy to kind of." Um, go by code but you need to kind of give us something right you need to kind of allow us to have a grant maybe um, you know give us some sort of leeway when it comes to paying the rent on the place there needs to be some give in terms uh, if for the clubs and promoters it feels if like they should abide by the rules because I think we've seen a similar sort of arguments happen in the states with gyms I forgot where it was it might be New Jersey or something a gym in New Jersey had its license revoked the owners had to go to court they boarded up the place and revoked his business license they boarded up the gym the owners got released Released from prison or sorry, released from um, the police station, uh, pending their court case, they went back to the gym, burst the door down, took off the the temporary um, boarding up of the doors and reopened it basically. And they didn't care how many fines they got, and they were basically arguing that hey, show us the science that tells us that we should be closed and it's safer not to have our gym open, and then we'll close. But if not, we're going to keep it open because they generally feel as if like people need to have a gym open or need to have the ability to work out if they're going to beat corona you know those kind of wacky american uh, conspiracy theories but regardless right they had that was kind of what they'll find against and i guess there's there might be some molecule of truth to it because you feel as if like um it's mostly these individuals or groups that are the ones that are responsible for leading the way in how an economy is going to reopen in any place especially in the united states it feels like governments are quite slow to kind of react and maybe they're kind of you know enjoying the sense of power they have by closing things down telling people they can't reopen citing science and stuff right it's quite an enjoyable process but in germany i'm not too sure what the deal is because i think the numbers in germany are pretty high still same with spain same with italy so i'd imagine some of the rest reservations behind it are well founded in terms of opening the clubs and again berlin isn't like most places berlin has a real good uh, relationship with his nightlife scene uh, they're very aware of the value it brings right uh, berkheim has been registered as a what is it? it's like a it's got some sort of special dispensation at the berkheim right they give grants to clubs all the time so i'm sure i'm pretty sure they're not doing it in any sort of malice they're not doing it as any sort of government of governmental oversight they're obviously doing it because they know once they reopen the floodgates in germany um similar to what's happening in italy with people going to these tech house parties they know once they reopen the floodgates and say hey with the scenes open again all the clubs reopen it's going to be absolutely jam-packed so they can't take any chances of having things reopen and then have a huge spike in cases and close them down again because that, that that could kill some places and it could also damage the reputation of the country uh, for a long time so they have to really take a long-term view at it but i guess you know people are going to protest people are going to dance to techno love parade vibes all that's malarkey <laughs> Okay, fair enough. What's the next one here? Dancing. Dancing. Walking past Bergheim. Interesting. So on again. There's no one work in Germany or in Berlin. There's no one work. No one have a day job. Like this is mad, isn't it? It's bad people out. I guess it's on a weekend, and maybe they could argue. But Jesus Christ! Yeah. Yeah. People be 
protesting in it. So I, I don't know, man. Look, I'm I'm part of the scene. You know, I DJ myself. I put on events. Um, I like to go to you know some of the best clubs in the world and have a good time. Uh, but I don't know, man. I just don't. I just don't think this is the most. Um, what you call it? I don't know. There's a part of me that 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 believes that this isn't the most crucial part of the economy. It needs to reopen straight away. I think there's other parts of the economy that need to open. You know, uh, before clubs do. They probably have a, more of a right to feel aggrieved at the slow turnaround and the in you know um, the way the inadequate way some of the governments have been dealing with coronavirus. Um, but I think nightclubs can probably wait, especially considering the risks at hand. Um, you don't necessarily want to have you know, God forbid they open up too soon and a whole slew of people get get COVID. You know they then go on to pass it on to different places. There's no track and trace. It's just not the best way to go about things. So there's a really a lot at stake really here to be honest. And this calls for a real, this calls for people to be responsible to act like adults and actually be like, you know what, we know we want to rave. We know we want to let our hairs down, but let's actually take the time to hope. Hopefully, let things get back to some kind of normality, and then we can restart the raving thing. But for now, it probably doesn't seem like a good idea in my opinion. Again, what do I know?